It is 11.54 and the meeting will return to order. Yes, I'm sorry, it wakes no, you up. Yes, you were asleep, yes. I have had a number of requests. The next items on the agenda are the ti debate time limits and potentially postponed indefinitely on items B11 and B14E Pluribus Hugo. I have had a number of requests to, uh, to, to take the Mark Protection Committee report and the nominations for the MPC next. Uh, that, would, that would suspend the agenda we have there. Is, uh, would, would the members be prepared to accept that? Okay. I'll take the motion then. On the mo there's a, is there a second to the motion to move, move that forward? Thank you. I'd rather not debate it. Do we really need to? Okay. Those in favor of jumping forward to the next item, which is the MPC report and nominations to the MPC, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The chair believes the negative has it. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, the member doesn't, if, uh, there's not going to be any debate upon it, and members who might want to be here or to accept their nominations, uh, you have an hour after the meeting to, sub to submit a motion or, or, take a, or perhaps take a piece of paper and fill it out now if you think you're going to be nominated and turn it in. You can accept nomination before you're nominated. <laughs> We've had several people do so, actually. So. Very well, we are now on B11, 4 and 6. And get to the right page. It's page 9 in your printed agenda. Moved to amend the WSFIS Constitution to reduce the number of nominations each member can make in each category. <laughs> To increase, uh, members cannot gain the recognition until the motion's actually on the floor. Thank you. Uh, move to amend the WSFIS Constitution to reduce the number of nominations each member can make in each category, to increase the number of finalists appearing on the final ballot, and to correct related references to the number of nominations per member. Mr. Bloom. Mr. It, moved, it has been, Mr. Bloom has moved to postpone the motion indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, there is, um, well, be, in the absence of, in, there's 10 minutes debate time by default in this one. Well, on the question I, to postpone indefinitely. May I suggest Oh, four, sorry, four minutes. I'm sorry, four, four minutes. minutes. I'm sorry, I forgot. Four minutes on the postpone indefinitely. Sorry. Mr. Bloom is the maker of the motion in uh, why we should postpone it indefinitely. Mr. Chairman, I believe that this is a genuine case in actually two of these proposed amendments where it would be premature of, of us to begin debate because we don't have the information necessary to decide whether this is a problem or what kind of a problem it is or how much of a problem it is or whether it's going to affect more than one year because we only have a single data point and we don't get that data point until midnight on, sa on Saturday night. Therefore, I think we should wait until much later. Um, and. The only way we can do that is to postpone it to, until next year if it's still needed. And it may or may not still be needed. A speech in favor of consideration, Dr. Lurie. See, I got it right eventually. You got it right a couple of times. Um, I think we all know this is a big problem. Um, I don't know what the right answer is, but if we don't do anything this year, we've got three years of this problem instead of two. So I think we should, uh, you know, debate these things this year. If we enact one or both of them, I'm good with that. We'll have some data. Uh, and next year, we have to ratify it anyway. So we'll have even more data. I would also like to suggest, if it is in order, that the business meeting ask next year's Hugo administrators to release the nomination data shortly after the close of final voting, rather than waiting until midnight after the total votes are out. Thank you. Dr. Lurie has su uh, suggested that you look ahead in the agenda. There's a motion to do that in the resolutions. A speech opposed to consideration, members who rise will be given preference. Sir, particularly if you're in the wings, I have so much trouble seeing you. I apologize. My assistants are here are trying to help. Jack William Bell, um, I lean against making any changes to the Hugo voting process at this time. I realize that that does extend out the possible pain. But I also think that a lot of this happened because we didn't step up and nominate. So what I would like to do is urge everyone to nominate next year. And let's wait until we get a little bit more time and a little bit more information before we make these kinds of changes. 
Okay, that was against consideration in favor. I th thought it was Tim, but yeah, yeah. Mr. Illingworth. Tim Illingworth, I recognize the sincerity of the uh, people who want to postpone indefinitely here, but I think it is a problem. We should talk about it. We shouldn't necessarily pass it. These may not be the solutions that we want, but we should look and see what we might want to do. And more debate here will make for a, if we need a different thing next year, debating here will be helpful. Thank you. Speech opposed to consideration, Mr. Galloway. And uh, yeah, okay, thank you. Tom Galloway. I actually do believe we need to produce something this year. This, however, is not it. It took me three minutes to figure out how to completely game this and make it not work. If you think about it, um, or if you want to talk to me about how, you can. But I think it's not a workable proposal. In favor of consideration, Mr. Buff. Warren Buff. While I do believe that knee-jerk reactions to this year's nominations would be inappropriate, I think that this proposal also addresses a psychological barrier that some folks feel towards nominations by separating the number of names you list on your nominating ballot and the number on the final voting ballot, and therefore would encourage people to nominate, which I do think is something we want to do. Uh, opposed to consideration, Ms. Foster. I'm Adrienne Foster, and I'd like to say that I really don't think the problem is the system. I think it, the problem is the people who drank Fox Day's lemonade, and I think something needs to be taken care of in that direction. I think uh, <laughs> collusion should have been no, the ma Moment. So, the member will suspend. Is that and, a, and Mr. Yellow will I, state their point of order. The point, of the point of order, no, no, the point of order is that the uh, member's speech was uh, 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 addressing an individual, uh, individual person. Uh, the chair rules the point of order well taken. Do not cast aspersions upon individuals in your speeches, no matter how you may personally feel about them. Uh, uh, speech, let me see, we are in favor of consideration, which one? Yes. Hi, I'm Chris Garib. I'm the guy who wrote this. Uh, it's not a knee-jerk reaction. We have to do this all over again next year. If you read the PowerPoint, what we're suggesting, this is the same thing for the EPH, is we'll sit down in detail and explain Saturday. If there's other ideas as how you want to do it, how, what numbers you want to change, uh, we are all ears. This is, this, is a, this is a marker in the sand to discuss a, a clear problem. Time has expired for debate. In favor of consideration, is there any reason anyone wants to speak any further? Fair enough. Uh, on the question uh, to postpone indefinitely, a two-thirds vote against consideration of four and six being necessary. All those in favor of considering item four and six, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to the consideration, hands down, there being way less than two-thirds opposed to consideration. The motion to postpone indefinitely fails. The motion will be on tomorrow on the agenda. Uh, the chair, now I actually, before I get to the debate time setting, I do want to point out the stuff at the top here. The chair has recommended that we schedule a committee of the whole, which is a, a more informal discussion of these two proposals on the agenda, for not more than 30 minutes at the first break after 11 o'clock tomorrow. That would allow for consideration of the technical aspects of both these proposals, not why they should be done, but how they work. I'm guessing there's some objection to that. Is there, is there any objection to doing so? I see some objection to that. Chairman, yes. In order to offer a this you could try so, yeah. If the member wants to make a substitute to it. And I'll come back to the debate time limit in a moment. Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman, after some thought and some discussions over dinner the other night, 
uh, about what the real problem is, and I agree that the real problem is people rather than counting or, or ordering or otherwise changing the Hugo rules, I would like to move to amend uh, by substituting every Hugo nomination ballot shall prom prominently contain the statement, I am, familiar, I am personally familiar with each of the nominations I have made and believe each of them to be worthy of a Hugo award, which must be specifically acknowledged by the nominator. The chair rules the amendment not germane. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the amendment is germane to the same is problem the as much as it was the last time, and I will appeal your ruling. The member is appealing the ruling of the chair. Okay. Is there a second to the appeal? Second. The question is on the germaneness of the amendment. This has 10 minutes involved in it because of the default involved. The uh, chair gets the first crack at it. Ready on the 10 minutes? Uh, Well, it's the remainder of what we've used up, actually. Whatever we've used, subtracted from the 10. We've already used some of the time on this, so whatever's left after the, we've used up. The chair believes that this motion is sufficiently outside the scope of the actual 4 and 6 proposal. It goes off in, a, in more of a tangent than the, it is not even directly antithetical to the exact motion, and therefore it is just too far out of line and is therefore not germane. Speech, Mr. Uh, Bloom, you get to speak in favor of why it's germane. Hold on just a second. Yeah, a moment. There's about six minutes total. Let remain. Mr. Chairman, I believe it is germane because it addresses the same problem in the same section of the Constitution. And ba although it, 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 it addresses it in advance rather than ex post facto, uh, in that it, it does not affect the way that the nominations are counted, it does affect the way the nominations are made. And it is a lesser but, but clearly different approach to what is almost certainly a problem that we cannot solve by legislation. But I do believe it is a germane way. To, 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 to consider this would be uh, to spend our time better than to consider all of the neeping that involved in counting and, and uh, dominating rules. Um, with both sides having said something, there's a question, uh, motion to uh, end the debate on the appeal. How many other people wish to speak on the appeal? A show of hands, please. Okay. A two-thirds vote being necessary to end the debate on the appeal. All those in favor of ending the debate on the appeal, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the affirmative has it. The chair won't even get his chance to speak in closing, but it doesn't matter that much. All those in favor of the chair's ruling that the proposed change that uh, Mr. Bloom proposed is... Uh, uh, the chair ruled that it was not germane. All those in favor of the chair's ruling, the motion is not germane, raise your hands, hands down. Those opposed to the chair's ruling, hands down, there being less than a majority in the, in, the, uh, in, in the negative, the chair's ruling is sustained, the motion is not germane. Mr. Bloom would be able to propose to suspend the rules and, and propose it as a new constitutional amendment once we get through all these things here. Therefore, I was trying to get back to some scheduling issues here. The chair, a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Blog. I do want you to come up here. Please don't stand around the edges of the room kibitzing. Kibitzing, kibitzing thank you. What? They are both on the nitpicking and fly specking committee. Gary Blog, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Face the audience. Face the audience. Um, for those, uh, you have something about there about Committee of the Whole tomorrow. Could you, for those who are first timers, could you explain that to them so they understand it better? Yes. That was what I was trying to do, Mr. Blog, <laughs> before you interrupted the chair with your parliamentary inquiry. A, a committee of the whole is a parliamentary device whereby we treat the entire group here as if we were a committee meeting. Um, the committee cannot actually do direct action on a proposal. All they can do is discuss it and make recommendations to the meeting as a whole. 
if this is if these two items are discussed in committee of the whole it would allow for a certain a certain level of informality in the consideration of the motions and the chair is trying to get this scheduled so that we do the committee of the whole meeting tomorrow and that we actually vote upon these two items at the Sunday business meeting. I do hear that there are, I, I, I'm just going to assume there are objections to us doing that. Uh, I'm assuming a motion to uh, uh, not refer this to committee of the whole is, is not a valid motion. Therefore, the chair is going to assume a motion to refer this to committee of the whole tomorrow afternoon uh, and, and take a vote on that. If, if, does it, is it necessary to debate why we do it? All right, thank you. This is the first section is on the Committee of the Whole, or, uh, Mr. Buff. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. can you uh, clarify whether we continue to video during the Committee of the Whole? Oh, yes. Um, actually, that's true. The, the motion, I, I, Mr. Buff reminds me of this, yes. The motion is to refer the motion to Committee of the Whole, but to direct that the uh, deliberations of the Committee of the Whole also be recorded and posted. Any objection to the modifying the motion accordingly? Can we just take a vote on that? I hope no one needs to debate it. Call the question. Thank you. Okay. Well, I had to. I had to ask. Okay. All those in favor, a majority being necessary to refer this to a committee of the whole. Um, uh, all those in favor of referring this committee of the whole tomorrow, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. All those opposed to referring to committee of the whole, raise your hands. Huh? Hands down. Uh, the affirmative has it, the committee of the whole is scheduled for tomorrow. The next item, and I want to deal with this, is the committee of the whole coming out of that, is to also schedule these two items for the Sunday meeting. Uh, that, and that, is there a motion to do that? So yeah. Okay, and it's, it's multiple people have done it. Do we wish to debate this? No. At least one does. I'd like to, I, the, the motion is debatable and there is a, you're allowed one for each side before we can call the question. Would one person like to speak in favor of, do, of the referral? In favor of referring, uh, uh, you know, scheduling it for, to, for Sunday? Yes? Mr. Matthews? Winton Matthews. How can we schedule the... Microphone. E Microphone. Okay. How can we schedule the e players Union section if we haven't even decided if we are even going to discuss it we can it, easily if it does if it gets if it gets killed we uh, I, i'm sorry i'll address them it, it's a part that's actually a parliamentary inquiry if yeah, it gets killed it doesn't come up at its scheduled time okay thank you okay, thank you is there a speech in favor of scheduling these two items for sunday uh yes uh, doc dr adams thank you And, and still, Andrew Adams, uh, we, we've just had the debate about whether we should or not debate um, four and six. We're going to have a similar debate about C. pluribus Hugo. It was raised in the issue there that we don't have the information yet about the nomination data. We need this nomination data to have a proper debate about whether we want to pass this this year. We can only get that information on Saturday night. Therefore, we should take this um, to a decision on Sunday. A uh, speech against scheduling it for Sunday, Mr. Gallo. The claim has been raised by the proponent. The claim has been raised by the proponents of this motion that this is solving a general problem, not a one-year problem. We have six decades worth of data to play with. We don't get a lot more data with one extra year if this is a general problem. If this is a one-year problem. That's an entirely different thing, but the proponents of the motion have claimed that this isn't, that this is a more general problem that is being addressed. And we've got lots of historic data about Hugo nominations. Is there any objection to ending the debate on the scheduling motion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Who wants to speak in favor of scheduling the proposal thus? Uh, yes, sir, and you'll need to give your badge, you know, badge information. In favor of scheduling these for uh, Sunday. My name is Jameson Quinn. I'm a uh, co-author of the proposal. to the audience, the proposal. not to the... Yeah, okay. My name is Jameson Quinn. I'm a co-author of the proposal. Um, I believe we should uh, schedule this for Sunday. Um, the... 
the objection to scheduling it for Sunday was that the that it we already have data. In fact, we only have full data for one year, 1984. Um, and in fact, and also, we don't have any data for when a problem came up. It is a general fact that a problem came up, can come up, if it comes up even once. However, um, we, in order to see if these proposals would help with a problem, it would help in order to demonstrate, you know, we, the authors of the proposal believe that it would help, but in order to demonstrate that um, to, to, the, to the general um, committee, um, we believe that the data from this year would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see, yes, that, was in uh, that was opposed to confirming, so uh, have, we, uh, have we had an even number yet? Yes. An even number of speeches? Did we, we got... Uh, I want to make sure. We, did, didn't, we know one more again. One favor. That, that right. That was in favor. One speech in opposed to po uh, po or yeah, opposed to postponement or to scheduling rather. Um, I, I, well, I don't know. I'm talking, did you see who got it first? I did not. Yeah, I think I think it was Ms. Olson. Okay, yeah. My name is Priscilla Olson. I want to see how it's spelled. Hmm, okay. <laughs> and um, I really um, am tired of extending everything and saying we must meet on this day, we must meet on this day. Some of us have a lot to do with this convention and the idea of deliberately pushing things into an, an extra day of the business meeting when it may in fact not be needed. Is, is really kind of upsetting. Additionally, I don't see how one data point of this year's extraordinary uh, issues with the Yugos will necessarily help us decide. It's just one year. Yeah, that's, you know, potentially it will, but I don't think it will. It's one year. And uh, holding it off for that reason makes no sense. I believe there might be people trying to move to call the question on this. I'm not sure. Did I? Call the question. Yeah. Is there a second? Okay. How many people still want to debate whether or not we should postpone it? Show of hands, please. Schedule it for Sunday. To schedule it, to schedule it for Sunday, yes. All right, thank you. All those in favor of uh, calling the question on the matter of whether we should postpone the and schedule these for Sunday. All those in fa favor of ending the debate, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to ending the debate, hands down. There being more than two-thirds in favor, the motion uh, to close debate uh, passes. The question requiring a majority is, shall these two items be scheduled for Sunday, Sunday's business meeting? We still haven't put debate time limits on them. We will do that. All those in, for what purpose does the member rise? Parliamentary, parliamentary member will come into the microphone and state his parliamentary inquiry. Uh, I'm Eric Shulman, and my question is, are we debating, are we asking whether we are scheduling for Sunday in this order in particular, or is what order we discuss them on Sunday a separate issue? The chair intended to take them, yes. The chair, the question was whether the, uh, would this be the order we take them up? The chair intended to take them up in this order, and uh, there is, an, uh, and the, and the debate, and, and that was the intent of the motion, and the debate has been ended on that, so there's no more motions accessible to it. When it comes up, it would be in order when it comes up on Sunday. It would be in order to lay one of them, lay the first one on the table, which is not what it means in British, and <laughs> to set it aside temporarily and bring it back up when we got back to it. All right. Uh, a parliamentary inquiry member will state their inquiry. Please come to the microphone and state their inquiry. The reason I'm standing is I was about to take the, about to uh, put the motion. Sorry. That's okay. Um, we have. Sorry. We have been discussing this, and it comes up a lot as though these are we are now voting together on four and six and EPH to both be scheduled on Sunday. Is yes, that the case? That is the question. The question is to schedule the two items on this slide on for, for consideration Sunday. Yeah. On the question to to consider these two items on Sunday, a majority being necessary to do so. Raise your hands if you're in favor of scheduling them for Sunday. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down, the chair believes there's affirmative. The, 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 there's a majority in the affirmative. 
There's a majority in the affirmative. These items are scheduled for consideration at the Sunday meeting. They will come up after anything that hasn't yet been resolved before them. Um, the next item would be on setting the debate time limits, but uh, can, I, can I do the debate time limits, or do you, is this relevant to these, Mr. Bloom? Yeah. Related to the one that Ms. Secor just had, uh, have we ever reached the point of, of discussing the uh, e pluribus Hugo? No, I'm going to do it when we get to the debate time limit on it. Okay. Yeah, they've been but scheduled for that time, but they are still within our, within our grasp because of that. That's what I answered in an earlier parliamentary inquiry. It will be in order to move to postpone indefinitely EPH in a, in a moment or two, okay? Let's try and get a debate time set on four and six. The chair has proposed... Debate time limit, wake up. <laughs> I, know, I know it's been such a long intermission, yes. Uh, <laughs> The chair proposes 10 minutes. Did I hear six zero? No. Okay, I didn't think so. 16, thank you. I uh, by the way, before I go on, it is pretty obvious that with the size of the room, the number of people wishing to speak is that the practical debate time is about one and a half times the amount of time adopted. Okay, thank you. All right, 16. Eight. How much? Eight. Eight. And four. I think, and 24. And 20, and was there a four out there? Yes. I think I heard a four, okay, yes, all right. Any others? 12. And 12. 32, no. No, 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 okay. <laughs> Masochist. All right, what are the top, what are the times? Um, I gotta have some fun up here. 24, 20, 16, 12, 10, 8, or four. Tw uh, let's get out. We got only about 25 minutes, folks. At 24. All those in favor of 24 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. That doesn't get it. Next is 20. All those in favor of 20, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. What's next? 16. 16. Those in favor of 16 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed. Hands down. 12. 12. In favor of 12, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Oh, that's close, but the chair believes the affirmative has it. Affirmative has it, and that is 12 minutes. Very well. Okay, now, I know you wanted it here. B14 is the debate time on E Pluribus Hugo. The chair recognizes Mr. Bloom. Really? Thank you. My name is Kent Bloom, and I would like to move to postpone indefinitely. Microphone. I move to postpone indefinitely. Okay. The question is on moving, uh, postponing indefinitely E Pluribus Hugo. Mr. Bloom, you get first, uh, just a moment. Let's catch up here. Just a moment. It's B, uh, the, the secretary has got to get caught up here. All right, Mr. Bloom. Mr. Chairman. Even more than the previous motion that I made, I believe this one is excessively premature to have any discussion. As we have discussed in the other motions that, and, and, and scheduling issues, the data necessary to make this is not going to be available this year. It might not be available uh, un, until uh, after the Hugo Awards next year, uh, if it's done in the traditional way, because we only have one data point that's not in the series. And if we, you have one uh, anomaly, it's simply not worth, or, or not statistically or otherwise valid to consider that um, as the, uh, a method, as a motivation for action, until you have verified that this is actually a, a problem and not a measurement, or in this case, a social issue. A speech opposed to postponement in favor of consideration. Oh my gosh! Any? Oh yeah, the maker of the original motion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, who made? Who made? Yeah, you're the maker of the original motion, right? Yes. Yeah. One of the one of the makers. Mr. Yes, Mr. Quinn. And... So in the previous discussion, I said that we needed the Sunday data. Uh, however, um, as both a statistician and a voting um, systems expert. Um, I can say that um, the, 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 the requirement for the additional data from Sunday is only 
as an extra demonstration of the effectiveness of this, me of this method, I believe that there are sufficient theoretical grounds to, uh, to debate this method and sufficient um, simulation evidence in order to debate this method with or without the, any data that we may ga gain from Sunday. Thank you. Uh, there are other people who want to speak whether we should or should not postpone it. Let's, uh, Mr. Lorenz, in favor of killing this. The theory is fine. Facts are a different matter. Actual real world experience is a different matter. I have administered the Hugos in 1998, 2002, 2006, and unfortunately 2015. Uh, there, this proposal would, is extremely complicated. It adds a lot of work to the Hugo administrators. It adds work to the programming needed. It is complicated to try to explain to the voters what the hell is going on with it. I do not think it's very practical at all. I could go on a lot longer if indeed we go to the committee of the whole tomorrow to describe why I don't think it works. But for the purpose of this, I will just say, based on my experience, this won't work. Uh, in favor of consideration, somebody who hasn't spoken before. Yo, oh, right, yes, sorry, yes, Mr. Watt, yes, the, the lead maker. Hi, I'm Kilo Watt again, I'm the lead for EPH. Uh, addressing the issue of complexity and the extra work for the Hugos, actually, it doesn't change anything in how people vote. So the instructions to the nominators will be exactly the same. One of the key things that we were looking at when we were developing this was do no harm. If there are no slates from here on out, EPH will change nothing in the results. It's designed so that only if you're getting this misrepresentation coming in will there be an effect. And I'll explain how that works when we have our committee of the whole. As far as coding, it's already coded. I've got it written, it's ready to go. If the Hugo administrators would be, can provide a common delimited text file, the code will work. That's all that it needs. I'm also volunteering to work with them so that the administrators are not having to do that, whatever it takes. The other thing to keep in mind is that if we approve it this time, we've got more time if we feel that we need to tweak it after the results of the 2015. The thing that we need to decide here today is, do we even want to hear it? Not, is it a good idea? So all of the discussion about, is this a good idea or is it not, that's not where we're at yet. Does it, is there enough of a problem from what we've seen in 2015 this year that we need to do something? If the answer is yes, we need to hear the options, both four and six and EPH. The member must yield the floor. The time for debate in favor of consideration has expired. There's not much in opposed to it. Is there any objection, is there any objection to ending the debate? I'm, I'm asking it the other way around. Uh, if there's no, if, how many other people want to speak to it? No. Is there any objection to ending the debate at this time? No. No. Very well. On the question to postpone indefinitely, a two-thirds vote against consideration being necessary to kill this. All those in favor of the consideration of E Pluribus Hugo, raise your hands. Hands down. Those opposed to its consideration, raise your hands. There being less than two-thirds in the negative, the motion uh, the post motion is not postponed. It will be scheduled for referral to Committee of the Whole tomorrow. It will be uh, considered for a vote at Sunday's meeting. Now we get the debate time limit. <laughs> Mr. Yellow. The Mr. Yellow. I move to substitute. That May I? The member, let, the, let the member speak. I move to substitute for the adoption language which calls for this to become an amendment to the Constitution to substitute a motion creating a committee to study the matter, which, by the way, is in order by it our precedent. It is in order. This, would, uh, this is a motion by substitution to substitute for the entire constitutional amendment 
a motion to create a committee, committee to consider the matter. To consider the matter. The, the matter, yes. And to report back next year. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it's an interesting question. The, the, the point of order has been, would this not be referring this matter to a committee, this, the proposal on the floor to a committee? The chair rules the motion in order based on past precedent where constitutional amendments have been converted into study committees at the preliminary business meeting. Um, I note uh, for reference purposes, page 15 of the minutes of the Philcon business meeting from the <laughs> Millennium Philcon. We all have that with us, right? 14 years ago. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a motion to create a, a Hugo study committee to, to consider the matters within the scope of E Pluribus Hugo. Do we need to debate this? I don't know. Mr. Yallo has effectively given an initial speech for it, if he, unless he wants to give another one. To, no? no. no? You, a speech against, then. Um, Dr. Lurie. I would like to amend Mr. Gallo's suggestion. As a secondary amendment in order or not? As a, because for an amendment by substitution, yes. I would like to amend it, say that we refer this to a committee uh, to consi continue considering it even after we have voted on it on Sunday. No, that is not in order okay. because you know, All right, in, in that you case, can create a new committee later Okay. You well, can, and you can do that later, but not right now. You well, can't. in that case, I think we all know there is a problem. I do not think that people that caused the problem are going to go away. And I think we need to start taking action now so that we can refine it next year and have something happen. I don't think we can survive three years of this. Uh, Mr. Glazer, is this a speech in favor? Point of order. Okay, try it. Let's see. Uh, my name is Glenn Glazer. I believe that Ms. Lurie's comments, or Dr. Lurie's comments, <laughs> was based on the idea that even if it was referred to committee, it would still be voted on. My understanding is that if it is referred to committee, it will not be voted on. The parliamentary inquiry uh, is, uh, the motion on the floor is to throw away E Pluribus Hugo entirely, tear it up, and insert a whole new motion that creates a committee to dis to to consider Hugo-related stuff, which would then be discussed by that committee and report back next year. It's a, rep it is a, rep the no, no, I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute, no, actually, they, I would act, they, the motion to create that committee would have to be, yeah, because it, it substitutes for what got proposed, that's a good point. The motion to refer to committee would have to be discussed on Sunday, because that's the substitute. All right, yes, all right. But, it, but that's only if the substitute passes. Uh, was that a speech in favor of the creator? No, that was a speech against right there. A speech that that was an inquiry doesn't count. Dr. Lurie's uh, motion uh, was against uh, creating the committee. Someone who wishes to speak in favor of creating the committee. Anybody? Okay, somebody wants to speak against creating it uh, over here then. Jack Foy. Uh, thank you. My name is Jack Foy. Uh, I'd like to uh, point out that the origin of this motion was, in fact, already an extensive discussion among fans within a uh, within a written documented uh, uh, process on uh, on a particular blog, uh, and and so there already has been a ton of consideration, although not within this body, on this on this motion. And I think it's already refined well enough that we should consider it as it stands. Uh, that was uh, a po Is there an objection to ending the debate at this time? Okay, a two-thirds vote being necessary to, uh, uh, no, no, sorry, yes, a two-thirds vote, there's no objection to ending the debate. The question is on postponing the motion indefinitely. Uh, sorry, you did throw a lot of things at me, Link it, yeah, thank you. The question is on, yeah, you're right, I blew it, okay. The question is on substituting a new proposal to create a study committee for the whole matter. All those who are in favor, what? A majority. 
majority to, to amend by substitution. Sorry, yes, a good point. A majority being necessary to, to substitute a new motion to create a study committee. All those in favor of creating the study committee, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, the negative has it. The motion to amend by substitute fails. Does anyone still want to fiddle around with this before we go to time limits? I don't think so. The chair proposes 30 minutes. First one is 42. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Quiet, please. Other times? Did I hear a 60? 6-0? 6 zero? Six zero. A 10? Can we try this one at a time? Yes. 22. 32. 36. 36. Don't joke, please, folks. We're running out of time. A 24 in there? Did you get that? What's that? 24. Yeah, 24. We got that. Okay, before we close this, what numbers do we have? We have 60, 42, 36, 30, 24, 22, 16, and 10. Was there a 20 in there? I did not hear yeah, a Yeah, put a 20 in there then. 20. Okay. Any others? I hope not. All right, let's start with 60. All, uh, all those in favor of 60 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed, that doesn't do it. What's next? 42. 42 minutes, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The negative has that. 36. 36, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. The chair thinks the affirmative has it for 36. 36 it is. Uh, inquiry, Ms. Secor. No, no, t debate time limits reset every day. Every day, it starts over again. All right. I believe, unfortunately, I really, w I didn't want to, but I, w I think we have to have a technical timeout here, one more. This meeting is in recess for two minutes, and this has got to be a quick two minutes, folks. We're running out of time.